Hello, highways agency. It's broken down. The regional control centre in Birmingham is the eyes and ears of the highways agency in the West Midlands. We've got a pedestrian walking up the central reservation. What's that car up there? But managing who or what travels on the roads is far from predictable. Definitely got two pedestrians on the toll. On skateboards? On skateboards, yeah. Um, 1335. Well, that's the first time I've seen uh, people on the skateboards. Cyclists, yes. Joggers, yes. Skateboards, no. It takes all sorts. <laughs> it does uh, surprise you of the type of uh, incidents you get. People having picnics on the side of the road, and we've had people like having naughties in cars, and they're on camera. Yeah, we had a report of a horse either near the carriageway or on the carriageway. Have a quick scoot through the cameras. Nothing obvious at the moment. The police have found the horse close to Junction 4. Yes. Up on the M6, up in uh, by Keel Services, we often get reports of suicidal horses. There's a um, bridge which connects two farmers' fields, and the horses will actually stop and look at the traffic as they go past. And you'd be surprised the number of 999 calls actually get with them saying that they think the horse is going to jump. 5-4, you'll find this debris now. It's just a line two, line three, we said. Here, staff oversee 500 miles of roads and six different motorways, including one of Britain's busiest, the M6. So we've got here the bottom of the M5 and the M50, um, bottom of the M40 and the M1. But I'd say the M6 is probably the busiest for multiple incidents. But the M5 can be just as bad as well. And it dep depends on the time of year as well. Because obviously the M5 gets all the caravans in the summer. You can't really predict it. You can't say, well, it's always there, because it's not. They're like children. <laughs> They've all got their own personalities. <laughs> the most unpredictable challenge that faces the motorway and the people that run it is the great British weather. You will get incidents, you'll get accidents you'll get members of the public not driving to the right road conditions. And uh, it means our workload doubles, trebles, quadruples. I ate rain. Oh, gosh. The wind, I ate the wind. Fog, no, it wouldn't even come on in fog. Do you panic in the rain? If you're driving, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you've got to be really careful when you're yeah. driving. Um, you have, you've got to, to drive, drive slowly. Slow. Or just not go out. It's getting a bit windy out down here. <laughs> it's a bit more open, do you think? We're over no bridges. <laughs> yeah, Worst nightmare, bridges. I don't know why I grip the steering wheel hard. <laughs> <laughs> more control. Like on a Norton Towers ride. Waiting for it to kick off now. In the regional control centre, a freak hailstorm has hit the West Midlands. A reports of a collision, uh, two vehicles, Audi and a Mini. Let's see. There's two, it's two RTCs. There's two RTCs. There's two cars in lane three, and there's four on the hard shoulder. Every year, there are more than 250,000 road traffic collisions, also known as RTCs, on Britain's major roads. The driver's dead, it's not an injury. Um, his wife is pregnant and I've got a small child. Oh, yeah. Here's the rain, marvellous. I said it was hailstorm, didn't it? It's all a bit mad. It's reported as uh, a non injury RTC. However, because the lady's obviously heavily pregnant, my colleague that arrived first on scene has called the ambulance purely as a year precaution. If you look to see where the tyres have gone, we skidded in, in lane one just by where the ambulance is. Tyre treads have actually come up to the centre, to the uh, barrier here. It's obviously hit the side and that's what's caused it to roll, causing the damage, as you can see from here. Honestly, all this weather has actually occurred in five minutes. Obviously, this is a great British weather, uh, but unfortunately, it is very, very slippy underfoot. Um, but as you can see, people are still driving there. Uh, above the speed limit. Planning for the effects of winter weather on Britain's roads is one of the key jobs of the Highways Agency. 
Weather chaos, snow and Arctic winds bring large parts of Britain to a standstill. Thousands of motorists are stuck in their cars, roads and trains are badly disrupted. On the 31st of January 2003, a weather event known as White Friday changed everything. Heavy snowstorms trapped drivers on the M11 for 18 hours, forcing them to sleep in their cars. There's been people, elderly people and children, and possibly babies, stuck on the roads around here since 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, which I find in the 21st century quite unbelievable. Well, I'd like to start, if I may, by apologising to those people that have had to put up with these atrocious conditions, stuck in vehicles for hours on end. That is just not good enough. I am not prepared to let this sort of situation happen again. As a result of White Friday, the Highways Agency launched a new team of traffic officers to deal with incidents and react to weather events. What's congestion? Between County and Stoke. Martin Stott was one of the original Highways Agency traffic officers. Yeah. He knows only too well what is at stake when winter preparation goes wrong. There was a, a lot of criticism, especially in Parliament, for what was thought to be a catastrophic failings of the, of the highways agency at the time. It feels like people are waiting for you to get it wrong. There is a huge amount of interest across the, the winter period, um, and it feels like the lions are poised to, to grab you um, because you haven't kept a road open. This winter began on a Wednesday in November with a message from the roads minister the man in charge of our motorways. It's that time of year again. We're about to be braced with a, a big winter coming up, aren't we? Yes, well, I, I gave evidence to the Transport Select Committee three or four weeks ago on winter resilience, and I assured them that we had plenty of gritters, that we had plenty of salt. We have better than ever uh, forecasting in terms of when it's going to be cold, uh, and therefore I think we're in a better position than we've ever been before to, uh, to take on the elements uh, when we have bad weather, which I'm sure we will have this winter. The media's prediction. They don't always get it right, should we say. I mean, here's, for instance, the, the, the Daily Express, look. Siberian snow to hit Britain. Uh, this was forecast for this week, according to this. So, there you go. I don't see no snow out there. Not much snow out there at all, is it really? Winter maintenance manager Mark Jones is in charge of deploying the gritters. Gritting is a chance for some overtime for the maintenance teams, earning a standby fee whether they grit or not. They stay in the luxury of their home with their feet up, getting £20, sipping cups of teas, waiting for the weather, as you can see. A lot of times during the winter, it's lovely and sunny, so they, they just get all this money in their back pocket, stock it all up. He's on standby. We don't know what he does, but he's always standing by. See, can't even answer that one, because he knows it's the truth. Keeping the M6 and surrounding motorways safe in winter falls to severe weather manager Richard Hancocks. In winter, whenever we travel anywhere, we have to play games, obviously, like all families do. Our games tend to be around spotting things, and sadly, whenever I'm doing it, it's um, spot the salt barn, spot the weather station, spot the gritter. Daddy gets very, very boring. This country is uh, full of individuals who get very, very excited by the weather. When we get the weather wrong, they love it. Oh, we're going to get snow, nothing comes. Oh, you said snow, we didn't see a flake. Um, we get that all the time. We have to err on the side of caution, and then we get moaned at because we got it wrong. And equally, we get moaned at because we will say, it's not going to be very severe, the weather's going to be fine, and all of a sudden the snow arrives and causes a little bit of chaos. The Highways Agency in the West Midlands invests an average of £1.2 million in 35,000 tonnes of salt during the winter. It's, it's chalk and cheese, unfortunately. People often say, if you didn't spend a million pounds on that, you could have improved this roundabout here, which is chaotic at peak hours. It doesn't work like that. I can't see a time at the moment when this country will not want to protect the motorway and trunk road network from ice and snow. The salt in my hand at the moment is probably more or less what we'll be putting on a metre squared of the motorway network in the West Midlands. 
And arguably, if that wasn't there and ice formed and somebody died as a result of that, uh, that salt probably cost us about 10 pence, say, in round figures. That's a very shrewd minor investment. It's my little den, this is. Quite messy at the moment. It's usually quite neat, isn't it, Tina? Are you an organised man? I would like to think I am organised, yes. But I think you've caught me on a bad day. <laughs> Hello, Peter. I sound like you're calling you in the bath. Oh, why, why, why can I hear bubbles? With road surface temperatures due to drop below freezing tonight, Mark deploys his gritting troops. All right then, mate, I've got to go, mate. I know you like talking and all that, but I've got things to do. All right then, mate. OK, yeah, you enjoy yourself. Ciao, ciao, ciao. I don't know what all the moaning is about. They all moan about when they go out gritting, but it's really very therapeutic. Therapeutic going out there, spreading a bit of salt and put a bit of music on. Don't see what the problem is, really. I hate night no, to call out bitch because you have to carry your phone with you wherever you go. Even when you get to the toilet, you have to have your phone in your pocket because it can go off at any time. On the front line of winter maintenance is Gritter Pete. Many a time I've just been to the chippy and then the caller grits and you're just thinking you're wolfing it down as quick as you can. I've got to go, I've got to go. And my wife is going, I'm sure they'll wait, but now they won't. Um, if they say you have to grit at this time, you have to grit at this time. There is no two ways about it. He's been spreading salt on the same route for the last six years. Tarmac, as we see, it's got lots of little holes in it, like, like an arrow. And when we grit, we spread the grit all in those holes. Um, so when it does freeze, effectively, there's, there's salt and grit in there to stop the water in those holes from freezing. Where are we coming up to now? This is Junction 6, which is Spaghetti Junction. It's always been repaired. It's just constantly been repaired all the time. The salt will rot anything. Uh, anything metal-wise, it will just rot. Any of these joints that you can feel we're going over now and you can hear, then the salt will get in them and they'll just rot them away. So you're effectively putting something down on the motorway that's destroying the motorway? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to put it like that, here we are. With its sprawling concrete arteries towering over a network of canals, rivers and railways, Spaghetti Junction is the largest and most complex interchange in Europe. It's like a cathedral with the columns holding the, the beams up. It's holding a lot of concrete up. It's like a big jigsaw, really, isn't it? How everything just slots in together. It carries 225,000 vehicles a day, but this junction, loved or loathed by millions, is deteriorating. We're actually underneath Spaghetti Junction now. This is one of the cross beams that's holding the motorway. The salt from the winter gritting on the road surface is corroding the steel rods, causing the concrete to deteriorate. Basically, when the salt comes through the beam, it goes on top of the beam. If there's cracks on the beam, the water will get in and it'll pop the concrete. Repairs started on Spaghetti Junction in 1989, and site manager Steve Wood has dedicated the last nine years to the project. Everybody's going, doing the business, driving along on the motorway, and they don't even realise we're under here, working away, making sure it's safe for these guys who are driving over the top. Built in 1972, Spaghetti Junction was a feat of British engineering. Rising out of the mud, the finished columns are like the vast ruins of an ancient Greek temple. At a cost of nine million pounds, it took just four years to build the six-lane carriageway and link roads that have become an integral part in the country's motorway system. It appears that many drivers just can't wait to try out that multi-multi-level interchange at Gravelly Hill. Well, a friendly word of advice. Know where you want to go and just follow the signs. I declare this runway open!
In this hidden world of rabbit warrens of scaffolding, Steve and his team are at the cutting edge of motorway repairs as they replace rusting steel and aging concrete. The first stage of the process is to blast out the old concrete using high pressure water jets. This is rubber and the trousers underneath made of Kevlar. You know the bloody armour? That's what they're using for. The Kevlar is used in combat because of bulletproof. Because that's where it's that's where it protects you from there going around main arteries. What would happen if you don't wear all this stuff? You'd get hurt. You'd get wet. <laughs> you get wet and you, yeah, the concrete had just hit, just pulverised you basically, it hurt. At 32,000 pounds per square inch of pressure, the water cuts through the concrete like a knife through butter. Once the old concrete is blasted out, any rusted steel rods are replaced. The next step is to fill the gaps with new concrete. There's issues like this in Japan, and they're looking at ideas in Japan, what we do here in Birmingham. Do they speak English or do you speak Japanese? They spoke English. I can't speak Japanese. <laughs> Finally, a network of cables are installed that constantly send electric currents into the steel ensuring spaghetti junction endures decades of winter salting. The current polarises the steel. It stops, it just stops, it corroding. It's maybe three volts, two volts, that's all you need. It's nothing drastic with a 20, 25 year lifespan. The junction's maintenance work is ongoing and Steve intends to see it through until he retires. People say it's just a job, but it's not. It's, I'm passionate about working under spaghetti because I just feel as if I've done my part, my little bit towards keeping it up and built. Are you proud? Yeah, yeah, I'm proud of, uh, yeah, very proud of it. Hey, just to let you know, you've got lanes two and three set for you. The regional control centre in the West Midlands is the traffic officer's headquarters. In all weather, 365 days a year, staff coordinate the on-road teams. Got a mail walking on the M6. Just like I say, he's on Sunday stroll. <laughs> We're just coming up the hard shoulder now behind him. Not a clue. They are, just noticed it, right next to him. Highways agency traffic officers patrol the motorways, attending to routine breakdowns, incidents and even pedestrians. They're just um, advising him of the error of his ways. Ah, oh, there you are, he's from Latvia. And he's trying to get to Birmingham. And at the moment he's up here on the M6 between 13 and 12 and he's trying to get down into Birmingham. So uh, he's got a long way to walk. <laughs> With it. Where are you trying to get to? From Sitchley, Dudley. Oh, right, not far, local. At junction 10, traffic officers Karen and Colin have been called to a live lane breakdown. It's not good here because we're on a bend. Breakdown call outs are higher in winter, putting extra pressure on the highways agency traffic officers. It should never be a human bollard. <laughs> no, that's not the name of the game. See, look at that, Colin jumping across there like a gazelle. I couldn't get over like that. <laughs> In fact, I should actually be this side. Hey, I know. <laughs> different style. Yeah, yeah, very different. He leaps over like a gazelle, I get over like a slope. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Karen and Colin are two of the longest serving traffic officers and have over 60 years driving experience between them. I think driving as a whole was a pleasure at one time initially 
Um, I can remember as a young, a young man, when I first started driving, it was a pleasure to go out. I, I, I purposely went out just to have a drive. Times have changed. It's that intensely used that the slightest thing to stop that flow of traffic has a massive impact. Wheelbarrows falling off the back of lorries and swans. Blown tyres, tyre walking, debris. Anything mm. on a more minor level, that's where we can be there as quickly as possible to sort it out. You know, you have people shout at you things like, get it out the way! Well, don't you think we would if we could, you know? And <laughs> Not aren't just we sitting trying? here because I like it. <laughs> Following the White Friday snowstorms of 2003, over a thousand traffic officers now patrol the motorways, helping Britain's motorists. Oh, all right, Seb, I think he's a quiet crocodile. Oh, Sebby, I can see red flashy lights in front. Oh, Sebby, there are some flashing lights coming up on the motorway. I think it's the police. Is it the police? Wow. I don't know. I don't know what they do. What does a traffic officer do? Truck drivers call them plastic policemen. Fully aware of them. You often see them sitting on their perch on the side of the motorway, ready to come on if they see if there's an accident. They're normally the first ones to get to it. They look like police cars because they've got the um, like the high vis stickers on, haven't they? And then when you get closer, I just think. Well, they're not the police. Then what does that mean, then? Drive faster. You see in the press, some certain people like to understand. TV presenters. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson runs a stand a lot. This is with Wombles. Uh, I think he got some image in his mind that we picked up litter. <laughs> Good old Jeremy Clarkson. He's made a mockery of us in his shows, blowing up Mokato cars. You've got to embrace it, haven't you? You've got to embrace it. Jeremy Clarkson. Somebody that spouts on like they know it all. Mind you, the last time I was at a closure on the toll, who should come past me but James Bond? James Bond? Yes. Timothy Dalton. Really? Yes. And he said, this isn't very good, is it? I said, no, not really. Which way are you going? North or south? my claim to fame. Don't go yet, Wayne. Don't go yet, Wayne. Don't go yet. Go, 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 go. Watch out for that speedboat coming around the corner. That jet ski. Yep. Alongside the traffic officers patrolling the motorway are Lee and Wayne of the Incident Response Unit. We've done some litter picking. We've cleaned the gullies off at 16, cleaned some gullies up on the straight. We've been busy today. They serve a hundred miles of the motorway and deal with whatever it throws at them. It's like a skin in the pants, really, to be honest with you. <laughs> the motorway is like a skin in the pants. And we have to clean it up. We've got to mop it up. <laughs> During winter, the motorway verges have less greenery and foliage, making it an ideal time for litter picking. This is like the glorious side of our job, picking up someone else's rubbish. And the people who chucked this rubbish, the house is immaculate because you've chucked it all here, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what we do find a lot of pornos? Pornos? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Money, iPods, uh, phones, wallets, tools, and oh, shoes God. as well. There's always oh. only ever one shoe, isn't there? There's always only ever one shoe. Where's the other one? <laughs> Doing litter picking, you find out the nation's favourite crisp has got to be cheese and onion. Yeah. Cheese like... and onion crisp. <laughs> Every year, 180,000 sacks of litter are collected on Britain's motorways and major trunk roads. And if it's not picked up, it can block drains, causing surface water on the carriageway. Hate this job, absolutely hate this job. There's no need for it. The money that's spent picking litter up would be spent somewhere better. Yeah, definitely. But doing a job like this, and when it's done and completed, it's a satisfaction of, like, it's all neat and tidy till, like, tomorrow, when it's going to be like this again. 
We're nearly there, Wayne. Well done here. Fresh cooked chicken. Nice. Even weather forecasters are describing the storm now battering western parts of the UK as exceptional. A month's worth of rain is anticipated to fall over the next two days in some areas, with now almost every part of the UK covered by a weather warning for wind, rain or snow. At the West Midlands Regional Control Centre, an emergency meeting is called. Today's meeting is all about whatever the weather throws at us today. Uh, we're prepared, we're ready, we're under pressure to make sure from ministers that everything runs smoothly across the country and the road infrastructure bears the brunt of the weather in such a way as to not disrupt the nation too much, we hope. Good morning, one and all. This is Steve at West Midlands RCC. Thank you for starting in this morning. With the West Midlands on high alert, the Highways Agency and winter managers plan for whatever the weather may bring. The worst case scenario for us, I suppose, today would be uh, an inaccurate forecast. It's very hard to predict. At the moment, the wind is the one that we're going to have to watch. Andrew, can you give us an update from the, the Met Office then, please? At the moment, what we're going to see is a core of heavier rain and uh, what's, that's going to be accompanied with some strong winds. Isolated gusts of 40 to 50 miles an hour. Richard Hancock's Amy's Severe Weather Manager. We've taken a forecast this morning which suggests slightly higher wind speeds than you're predicting. We've got a West One domain where they're telling us we might experience 65 mile an hour winds um, as far across as Shrewsbury and Shropshire. Yeah, I can, I can see where they're getting that from. It's, it's just as uh, the winds go more into the west and you get a core of strong winds, but it's essentially impacting North Wales, but for well, Shropshire area, should be, it'll be much less than that, essentially. So more like, more like 50 miles an hour. Planning, when the storm was first forecast, we're hoping that that planning is going to be enough. We hope that the forecast has got it right, and it sounds pretty awful, but we'd kind of be quite grateful if it went past us and went over somebody else. Everybody breathes a sigh of relief and uh, goes home and sleeps a nice, quiet, comfortable night. Holy crap. <laughs> Perhaps we won't go just at this very moment in time. The wind speeds are starting to increase. The heavy rain that was predicted has arrived. Is it as bad as it looks? The wind is really picking up. As forecast. <laughs> On road, all emergency and breakdown services are on high alert. You've not picked a good day for it, have you? Nick Evers is the AA Patrolman of the Year. The great thing about our job is the fact that everybody's pleased to see you. Doesn't matter who you are, who they are, what they're doing. When you turn up, their, their, their smile normally appears. Nice. So when these trucks come past, it's like somebody's throwing a bucket of water at you. Well, I don't think this is going to work, is it? Ooh. Ooh. What happened? Uh, coming down, got a flat tyre, and I got a spare tyre, but no tools in the in the back to uh, do it. And he's got the job now, lying on the wet floor and everything. <laughs> They're real heroes, aren't they, really? Coming rescuing weathers like this. And... Breaking down is a very, very stressful thing, especially on a motorway. It's a really frightening place to be. As long as we can, I know I can get the car fixed, it's great. You know, you can have a little laugh and a joke and, and just lighten people's spirits. But you need a sense of humour. You have to. With the things we see, <laughs> you need a sense of humour. At Junction 7, the winds are already gusting at 50 miles an hour. I 
Weiß ich nicht. In the control room, the high winds have brought a deluge of calls from the motoring public and officers on patrol. RTC junctions 11 to 10, Heather. Seems that the informant said that um, a long object has hit his vehicle, which came off another vehicle as it was passing and broke his windscreen. Apparently a tree has fallen onto uh, an LGV. He says it's fallen across the hard shoulder in, into the first lane. I can't see a tree. The, the wind's just moving the camera, so when the wind picks up, it just blows it about. We get a, a bit of a wobbly picture. If you look at it for too long, you're going to go all, all dizzy. <laughs> Whiskey Sierra 2-1, code 6 received. Try and do something about this tree, otherwise we might need some professional help if they can't do it, either. Yep, they're on route here now. Adam Fields is the youngest manager in the West Midlands motorway maintenance team, and it's his first winter in charge. The incident we're going to is only one lane running, and it's the half past four. It's quite a busy time. They're going to be late for tea, I think, a lot of these. They're probably a bit pissed off that we're using the hard shoulder because uh, we don't have blue lights on our vehicles to get to incidents. We have yellow lights. And of course, you see yellow lights, people might think we're just a recovery firm and trying to uh, cheat. Looks as though there's a car involved as well, doesn't it? So I'm just hoping that they're not injured, to be honest. The tree had fallen over into the slow lane. So this truck was quite ahead of me. So he swerved from the slow lane into the middle, into the fast lane to avoid the tree. I could see that I was going to hit the back of it, so I tried to turn slightly, and uh, it was too late, and then I clipped the back of it and um, came over. That's what I thought, you know, if I lose him, uh, but... <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't lose me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Adam. 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 With rush hour traffic building, Adam needs to call out the team of standby tree surgeons to clear the carriageway. Two furthest out would definitely need to come down. And I think these other trees may need to be assessed so that uh, if the poor weather continues, we don't have the same situation in an hour's time, really. So uh, we're just waiting for the lad to come with the chainsaws and hope to get this bit of branch down now. I don't like the way that's still swinging yet. <laughs> They're trying to get to us, but they can't because they're back on the traffic's backlogged, so they can't get through. So you just take it with a rough and a smooth, simple as that, you know, like every day, one thing or another. <laughs> In the regional control centre, they're dealing with a the fallout from the storms. We're at the peak time of the rush hour now. We've got 23 kilometres of congestion on the U6. Uh, we've only got one lane running past the scene still. We're still waiting for the tree surgeon to arrive. This is quite substantial congestion now. And how far back from this box is it? Thank you very much, Sugar. Get someone to have a look at that. It's got no cameras, got no crews. We have had multiple reports of tree spawning. Okay, Papi Uniform 1-8, they've got five trees blocking all lanes. They need you to stop the traffic so they can retrieve these trees out of 60 foot conifers over. It's amazing what the weather can throw at you. The last thing I was expecting today was 60 foot conifers across the carriageway. <sighs> all right, mate, the tree cutters have just got on site at this first one, but where Adrian Shaggy is, Chaos, mate. Trees are falling down left, right, and centre. He thinks it might be best to close Junction 15, to be honest. But, but would we be allowed to close the motorway at six in the evening? I'm not sure, to be honest. But a bit more concerned about them. It's a bit dangerous. Okay, mate. Why do you worry about your workers so much and their safety? Uh, because we had two workers run over just over a year ago, Rob and Gordon which wasn't very nice. And uh, we don't want that to happen again. So now we've got to think, are we best off closing the motorway at Junction 15? Obviously, when we spoke to everybody concerned. 
Any decision to close the motorway has to come from the highway's agency. Tonight, team manager Nina is on duty. I've just been talking to James. He's in conference with staffs at the moment. Yeah. Are we going for a total closure at 15? Uh, not he's, at the moment. He's getting the idea that we... I haven't said a total closure at 15. But what, what I've agreed, if our crew are in a position to move the trees to the hard shoulder from the live lane, they will do that to clear yeah. the obstruction from the carriageway. It's quite protracted, isn't it? It is, but it's not in all lanes. I'm reluctant to close the motorway. And we also can't confirm that the diversion routes are clear of flooding no. and trees either, so it's a no-win situation, really. Exactly. If I can keep the motorway open, I will. OK. Did you hear that? Adam is still on his way to the scene of the fallen conifers, but has had to stop on the hard shoulder. Yeah, I'm stuck behind you, mate. Are oh, you joking? The roof's blowing off. OK, mate, cheers for that. What? No keel services that uh, we drove past. There's rumours now that the uh, roof's blowing off. We've got to rely on people moving out of the way for us, which, which I don't know if they will do, to be honest. Don't go back. Whoa. Back on the hard shoulder, Adam spots the first of the six fallen trees. That's like some out of Jurassic Park, isn't it, that? that? This one here, that's on the entrance to the services. You all right, mate? Yeah. Sure? relief to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Like my job is just trying to coordinate the guys on the road so my job's a lot easier than what their job is. I always hope they're all right. Five tree surgeons and Adam's team deal with the worst case of fallen trees on the M6 in a decade. These guys generally go to uh, traffic accidents every other day but something like this is uh, quite rare, to be honest. It was a bit like Jurassic Park. Wasn't it? One of dinosaurs, isn't it? <laughs> Reptile. You poor old fossil. <laughs> you know what I mean? Must be nice to be lucky. Five minutes and we'll be done. Surprised that the incidents on the M6 haven't made it to the uh, national news, I don't know. But it shows how much is going on today. It shows how many uh, incidents are going on around the country. After six hours of gale force winds, the storm finally passes, and it's the end of a long shift. Good night. See you tomorrow, Kerry. <laughs> Good night. What's it looking like out there? It's nice and calm now. <sighs> Have a good night. Gosh, in the middle of the night, the wind was howling. I think it's blown over yeah, now. The sky's it's blue. Better than yesterday. Yeah, we just had to include this little bit of the 54. It's on our patrol route. It makes a change from looking at concrete all the time. We tend to get a, a few escapees. few escapees onto the motorway. <laughs> I must admit, some of the funniest times we've had is chasing lambs. <laughs> and deer. And deer. And ducks. And dogs. Oh, yeah. So one or two of the traffic officers have ended up with an extra pet. <laughs> the one I took home dominates the middle of the bed most nights. Bless him. <laughs> A big dim ginger cat. Whenever we work together and we get a call for a, an injured animal, That's we... Really uh, worried. Yeah, in trepidation. An average of 30 animals a month stray onto the M6 and surrounding roads. Is this an animal? Is this like a topper? 
What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nose. What the hell is it? I don't know what it is. Oh, badger. It's a badger by the looks of it. Well, what's left of it anyway. But uh, badgers have got a thing for, I know it's, a, it's flat and light, but they've had a few problems with them exploding in people's faces, yeah. haven't we? The bodies actually explode and they're going in people's faces. So we have to wear all their suits, but there's not much left of that badger. So I don't think we need to be suited up really for that. I'll put my eyeglass on just in case it goes in my face. We have all the nice jobs, don't we? It's got to be done the at the end of the day. The smell varies, yeah. but... The smell does vary. Very, very well. It depends if it's a hot day or cold yeah. day, but you just get used to it. Each season brings different types of animals, which Lee and Wayne have to deal with. It can be deer, uh, foxes, badgers, uh, cats. It could be even, like, horses, can it? Yeah. Sheep or anything like that. Anything, like, any livestock, really. Normally, nine out of ten, they're dead, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like my way of picking up that badger? Do you like animals? Yeah, yeah some taste really nice. Not too bad at all. <laughs> that chick. I've got, actually, I've actually got a fear of a certain animal. <laughs> you haven't, yeah. Chicken. Chickens. <laughs> chickens are like the bird of Satan. You scared of chickens? Chickens are evil. I think the one thing that I dread above all else is if ever I'm told to go to an accident that involves a, a, a sheep wagon or something like that. Oh, right, yeah, carrying a livestock, a livestock Ooh, livestock wagon. Oh, I'll need therapy. I told you about that story about the one that I went to recently, and it was a St Bernard. It was like trying to move a donkey. It was massive. Was he, had he got an owner? Not, not on the motorway. He uh, got in touch, did he manage to chase him? I, I think they did, oh, yeah. thank goodness for that. It's not something that would go missing without you noticing, is it, really? No, Saint you'd miss it, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, can you just confirm the location of this dog? So we're given 209 over 5 northbound, right by lamp column 5729. Greyhound. It hasn't got a tag, which is a bit strange, but we'll go back the yard and get the chipping device, check, see if it's chipped. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if it's either come from the houses over there or the houses down here, jumped over the barrier. Yeah, it's a shame, really. Uh, I'm going to have to get his legs off. Oh, hang on, save the bag open. Badges and stuff are just day to day, but dogs. I think this is the first dog I've had in a few months. Yeah. Is, I like to bury them nowadays. Quite, we've had a couple ones make ashes and stuff, winging yeah. ashes and stuff, but... It's a family pet though, isn't it? Yeah. End of the day, it's part of the family, so... Every domestic and wild animal is stored at the nearest maintenance depot. You have to log everything down on the on a list, and this is the, uh, oh my God, this is the freezer, but not the freezer you really want to get you beef burgers out of. All the animals, if they're not collected, the dogs aren't collected, they go to be incinerated, which is yeah. the safest way or whatever. Plus, it keeps them kind of fresh. Stops them decomposing. Chosen, yeah. Well, actually, every dog that we pick up um, has to be scanned, just in case we can um, locate the, uh, the owner. No tag found. Yeah. Oh. 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 Back in the freezer you go. Luke, yeah. as he's got no name, we're going to call him Luke, aren't we? Yeah. This is Luke. Goodbye, Luke. When I first started on here, we took the... It was a Springer Spaniel round to the guy's house. He wanted to see it there and then, like... But luckily, that dog wasn't actually in a bad mess. But he kept all of it and I think he buried the dog with the family because it was a proper family's pet. I tell you, it was quite upset because he nearly started crying, the bloke did. He was quite upset, really. Yeah. <laughs> you do get a bit involved with it, a bit wrapped up with it, when it's... Yeah, of course you yeah, are. Yeah. But... yeah, of course, yeah. 
Food, definitely. I'm a man who likes my food. Oh. Oh, see, that you've got, got to look at this. You've got to look at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at this, what his missus has done for him. I don't get him. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's 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 yeah, look at that. Oh. See what I've got in mine. Death. <laughs> Probably a death letter. <laughs> or some badger. Yeah, I've got, I've got badger. Yeah, badger. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a... so sweet for you, that is. Yeah. Do you know what? That's touching, that is. That's it proper is. touching. Mm. Yeah. Now look at the state of that. Now look at yours. Look at the sandwich oh, difference yeah. here. I've just got cheese on this one. He's got like proper ham. Let's yeah. have a look. Egg. Look at that. <laughs> look at the difference. Mine's right. <laughs> Mine's right, Scabby. I'd be happy with a bit of mould on it, just give it a bit more flavour, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane force storms brought chaos to the road and rail network. Severe flood warnings remain in place in southwest and southeast England, with a warning that a month's rain will fall in the next few days. Despite the highways agency's preparation for ice and snow, it's the wind and rain that's causing the serious issues in what is the wettest winter in nearly 250 years. Surface rainwater on the motorway is a serious issue for motorists. Well, if we don't clear the water off, we can end up on the main carriageway. Well, if you look behind you, it's partly on the slip road. So we're going to try and get rid of that as well now. When a car travelling at speed hits excess water on the carriageway, the wheels can lose traction, making the car impossible to control. This is known as aquaplaning. Well, a traffic accident between four and four. Yeah, central reservation. Now back on the high charge, isn't it? So... Does she need an ambulance? The weather is chaos. We're not telling people not to travel. We're just saying if you need to travel, be prepared, be aware. It's out of everybody's control. What's the weather like? Is it easy? Due to get some more wet coming through shortly. About right? seven or eight o'clock, there's supposed to be another front of wet dropping on us through to about nine o'clock, so. Right. And quite heavy. And uh, what's going on, sir? Martin Stott is one of the original band of traffic officers employed in 2003 after the White Friday snowstorm. How would you describe yourself in that photo? Fatter. <laughs> um, it was an exciting day for us all to, to come and join, but the, it was the unknown. We didn't know what the job was, um, and we didn't know what we were undertaking. A decade on, and Martin knows the reputational damage that bad weather can cause. I think there's constant pressure. Each incident throws up you know, media interest with heavy rainfall and, and poor driving conditions, that immediately escalates. And it's about um, using the last 10 years to learn what solutions we can come up with that, that are outside the box, really. Lots of an RTC, a vehicle spun out of control sideways. The storms that have flooded thousands of homes and roads in the south of England have reached the West Midlands. Well, picked, the wind's picked up really badly, the rain's uh, coming down heavier again. We've got a vehicle gone off-road on the M54. Got an um, accident involved in an LGV in a car by the looks of it. Um, so I'm just sorting the signals out at the moment. Now with the region on high alert, the control centre and on-road traffic officers are running at full capacity. Rain, high winds, RTCs, breakdowns. RTCs and breakdowns in the road work, the M50's flooded, the M54, we've had vehicles left the carriageway, you name it, it's happened. The town of Worcester has flooded, and 65 mile an hour gusting winds have closed the two seven bridges. The M50 is the last remaining route into South Wales. I know it looks really bad where you are, but down there they've closed both the bridges because they're having it, having it really bad. And with three being a bell junction, if we divert off at three, then I don't know if we're causing more harm than good. How bad is the flooding there? Um, fairly serious, but it, it, it's the only arterial route that we've got at the moment, so it's key for uh, the public, emergency services, hospitals, etc., that we keep that, that road open. And that's like a little bit of a river. With 10 years' experience in the job, 
Highways Agency team manager Sue Hine arrives at the M50 flooding. So this is what we're up against. We've, it's coming out at all angles. And you can see it's eroding the actual ground away. We're going up to Junction 3 that's flowing like a bit of a river across the motorway. And as you can see across here, Lane 2 is completely taken up by the flood there. A bit of a landslip further along as well, which we need to deal with. Watch yourself, you're going to get soaked again. Hey! Nothing like a shower at this time of night. Thank you very much, whoever that was. It's a good job, <laughs> it's a good job, I don't care. <laughs> All right, let, let me get back to you. I really need to avoid closing. Cheers, Sue. Bye. And I've just told her, if we close this, then we can't guarantee that the traffic has got anywhere to go. And if it does have somewhere to go, then it's not going to mm. end up in a worse situation as well. We can keep it open, then. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for the chief inspector to get back to me. So. We're all stressed. A multitude of jobs going on on the whole of the the West Midlands network and countrywide for the for the highways agency, fighting a, an immense battle. What's going to happen if it doesn't work? Um, plan Z. Uh, I think we've we've worked through A, B, C, D, E, F, and and most of the alphabet at the moment. Um, we have a a fallback plan. Um, it's a it's a first for me in ten years. Hello, Master speaking. I, I shall be very very brief. We've invoked the army for the M50. That's about to go out, probably in the next 20 minutes, realistically, in a, in a convoy. Um, but hopefully that will keep us open. Martin's decision to call in the army is unprecedented in the history of the highways agency. I've never known it before, but then I don't think we've ever had weather quite as bad as this before. <laughs> sure. 40 soldiers arrive to help shovel the silt and clear the surface water. Anybody got a spare couple of pairs of hands? Can I help me put some cones out, please? Down the line, please. Probably about 10 metres apart. There you go, somebody. If you follow him down, straight down the line, straight down the middle, please. If you start there and go, no, here. Yep, follow him down, yep. I have four children, I know how to boss. As another deluge of rain falls, the army stack 1,500 sandbags as quickly as possible to contain the flood water. Pouring down with rain again, as you can see, and unfortunately, not all of it's been stopped, but what we're going to do is go on to the next one, and we'll just come back to this if necessary and see if we can do anything else for it, because the, the main priority is we've got to keep the M50 open, so we'll just keep working. Yeah, north of staffing on the side side. Right, Cheers, mate. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, Master Swiggy. All right, give, it, give us about an hour. And maybe the world will have calmed down. How are you doing? I'm having a great evening. See if they can get the army to contain it with sandbags and we'll just monitor it for a bit. What would it mean if you have to shut that motor away? Disaster, uh, which we're trying to avoid. Uh, so. It, quite a lot of, uh, of impact on a huge amount of people. So the, the priority is obviously to try and keep it up. Excellent job, boys. Well At the second site, eight soldiers and sergeants from the Central Motorway Police Group join the shoveling operation. Glad to see you putting your back into it, Sarge. Oh, hello, boys. We're here for shoveling. <laughs> Raining. My hair's starting to dry out. <laughs> we, are we are winning. How's it looking down the bottom? Done. Thanks. Brilliant. Four hours since the army arrived, the storm has passed and the surface water has been cleared from the carriageway. Guys, you can go back to your uh, wagons. Thanks ever so much for your help. Okay, Very no much worries. appreciated. Nature is nature, isn't it? You can't hold back the force of nature. It's as simple as that. You can just do what you can do which is what we've done tonight, quite successfully, actually. Thanks very much for your help up there. Cheers. Yay. Done and dusted? Oh, OK. I've got a sore throat. <laughs> it's something if Karen's sick of talking. This doesn't happen very often. <laughs> but we haven't stopped. We really have not stopped. 
It's doing the, the job that's intended and in the cold light of day tomorrow we can see that we've done everything correctly um, and that it, you know, it's nice and tidy, it's safe for the public to travel on. Um, so we'll make a reassessment first thing in the morning. So you're going to be able to keep the motorway open? Absolutely, yeah, um, at all costs. This winter, the Highways Agency was well prepared for the snow and ice. But for the M6 and its surrounding motorways, just 9,000 tonnes of its winter salt stocks were used. A record low. Yeah, believe it or not, there is actually a gully somewhere underneath here. Instead, it's been the wind and rain that's caused the toughest challenge for the Highways Agency. For me, winter's all about making sure that we keep all of our carriageways free from snow and ice. And then all of a sudden, wallop, and the thing that did catch us out was um, February and the high winds and the really heavy rain. A bit of chaos, and then we're back to business as usual with winter, spending a fortune, spreading salt, and waiting for the next significant and severe weather event to occur. Yeah, it's not bad, not bad. Yeah, it's turned out quite nice. It's warming up a little bit. Well, that's our route done two times. Yeah. Is behaving today at the moment, but wait a minute, you never know what might happen. <laughs> Next time. Whoa, RTC there. Tell them it's life in the fast lane. I've never known that happen before. Oh, that doesn't look good. I can see it, mate. To go fast, wool. We won't keep you too long, so they just fill in a pothole in, OK? And we are just stuck right in the middle of it. Wait there! We've stopped these for a reason!